Well, hello everybody. Uh, just doing a little quick video here to uh, show this SX-71 Holocrafters uh, 1953 vintage. Uh, this radio uh, belonged to my dad, who's an old-time ham, who just gave it to me. He's, uh, he's in his 90s, and uh, we've had this radio in our family as long as I've been alive and before. Uh, this, this was his radio uh, in, uh, when he was starting off. Uh, he started with a Holocrafters S38 and upgraded to this, um, which is, of course is a much better receiver, much more uh, bells and whistles and just more sensitive. Uh, but um, we've been using this one uh, right along and uh, I'm going to be uh, recapping the unit. Um, okay. So this is 40 meter uh, sideband. Um, radio sounds good. It hasn't been recapped. Uh, the uh, all original paper capacitors and uh, electrolytic uh, is in there. Uh, I picked up a um, a rebuild kit for it uh, from uh, that Hamfest uh, company. Uh, and uh, I guess they, they, that's their specialty. They, uh, they give you all kinds of uh, kits to help you along to get the, uh, to actually get things up and running quicker. And the only reason I went with it was for the can capacitor and electrolytic, as you can see, because uh, I'm gonna flip this over in a moment uh, and uh, show you what the undersides look like. It, much easier to use the, the already pre-stuffed can, even though you can do it. It's, uh, it's, it's an ugly job, I would think. But uh, right now I've got the unit on, uh, I'm just watching the current, it's drawing nothing. Uh, I didn't even try a variac since the unit had been up and running in, in history, so I didn't see that it would be any problem. I uh, point out this uh, this cool speaker, that's a 3.2 ohm speaker. Uh, vintage is probably earlier than this, uh, this particular unit. Damned if I know where my dad got it from. I'm betting... Uh, he scrounged it up from someplace he was working in back in the 40s and 50s. Um, I can remember this hanging uh, in our in our kitchen area. And my father used to um, pipe in what was called Muzak, which was stuff that was done uh, by the place he he was working, a television station. They they provided elevator music uh, superimposed uh, on an a on their AM broadcast. Uh, Frequencies and my dad built a converter and actually piped in the music. So that has a whole history of itself. So uh, I'm going to flip this off and I'm going to, uh, one second here. Uh, sorry for that. I'm going to uh, just want to show you uh, what we have here. Uh, get a little bit of light on this. Uh, if you look down here, you can see the transformer. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, the electrolytic is right up here. And you can see, you'll probably work your way in and, and do some mounting of the capacitors underneath. They're small enough, but uh, it would really be ugly. And I point out this one, uh, uh, this one capacitor here. I can get a little bit of light on this with my self here. This, this capacitor here is looks to me like it's popped uh, I was you can see there's stuff oozing out of it it doesn't seem to have hurt anything it's a 0.01 and then I was looking at this guy right here this is a this is going across the line and uh, I, I don't know they don't it wasn't included as a replacement uh, so I'm assuming that this might be a pretty good a pretty good capacitor um, as a, a across the line capacitor and I know they do sell um, they do sell better ones and uh, I consider maybe replacing it according to the spec it I believe it was only a, a point one uh, anyway uh, so this is the rest of the uh, the rest of the uh, paper capacitors um, none of them look particularly terrible but who knows they they are original and uh, it's just they're sketchy. I'm thinking that it, you'd be foolish not not to replace them. Uh, they all look like they'd be pretty easy to get to. Um, didn't really see any. Uh, the hardest one is probably going to be down here by the volume control, and I'm 
think that probably would be easy enough depending on how I do it. And my preference is to unsolder everything and do it the right way, but if it's too hard to get in, I may just uh, I may just use the existing leads. So, but uh, that's pretty much my uh, my project here. And you can see it's uh, units in really nice shape. Um, the uh, it is very clean. It's always been well taken care of, and it's been surprisingly worked on quite a few times. So apparently, because I was looking at uh, a lot of missing panel screws which I guess my dad wasn't big on putting them back. But I'm um, trying to see if I can find some panel screws to, uh, that'll fit in there. They're just a pretty much a standard uh, self-tapping screw. And then I'm sure I can find something that's uh, appropriate for the radio. And everything else looks good. It tunes well. Um, I really don't see any, uh, any big deal replacing it. I just have to get a block of time here where I can kind of start this and, uh, and finish it all in... In one sitting because I don't want to pick up, I don't want to keep picking up. But I said the first place I'm going to tackle is that electrolytic and this uh, that 0.01 because it is soldered to one side of one side of the uh, of an electrolytic and I've got to take it out of there anyway. So, but uh, I'll post more as uh, as we uh, proceed and uh, give everyone an update on this. Thanks for watching. Bye.